just like the adult one, but it's littler, because they're littler. What is a pediatric, and what is a baby, and what is an adult? You guys took heart, you took CPR, right? Use the CPR definition, heart association definition. You know? Eight years old is what? The end of childhood, right? Nine years old gets treated like an adult. Eight years old is pediatric. When is it a baby? Under a year. Okay, so when we think about this, baby's airway is too fragile to put a cuff. So baby gets a tube. Oh, this one has a cuff. That's very unusual. They occasionally do that, but it's very unusual, only for special cases. Here's a normal pediatric tube. It's a 3.5. This would go into a normal baby. Like, Abby has a baby. Baby has breathing problems. They'll use a normal 3.5. A 2.5 is for a preemie. Uh, when you do neopedes, they'll give you formulas. So you take the, uh, the animal. You take that baby's weight. Oh, well, all of this for, for veterinary medicine, too. All the respiratory medicine is identical in veterinary medicine. So they have longer ET tubes for horses. They have spacers for horses for their MBIs. Horses get asthma. Big spacer things. They have pulse oximeters for animals. It's really cool. Well, because the doctor wants to, you know, but you can't put it on the cat's finger. The cat doesn't have a finger. Then they got all the same medical stuff for animals they got for us. Okay, so what's the difference? The only difference is this one has no cuff. Now this tube has one more marking on it that that new one doesn't have. It says Z79. See that right there? Z79. Let me see if I can find any other weird markings. This one. Now they also say do not reuse. So you never re-sterilize these because of the type of plastic. It's PVC. If you re-sterilize it, it'll give off toxic stuff into the airway. So we don't we don't re-sterilize ET tubes because the type of plastic it's safe, but if you re the re-sterilizing can cause the plastic to release chemicals. Okay? Let me see if I find any more with this silly markings on them. This one has the Z79, but it's a symbol. So they, you know how the world is now. They've gone to universal symbols rather than languages. Uh, let me tell you what Z79 is. Z79 is a committee of the American National Standards Institute that sets the standards for how to make one of these tubes. Okay. If the tube says Z79, it means that the type of material is not toxic to human tissue. And the other thing it can say is IT, which means implant testing. So they shave off a little of the plastic, and they actually, this sounds gross, but they take rabbits, and they stick it into the muscle, the paravertebral muscle of the rabbits. And then they wait, and then they kill the rabbit, and then they take the tissue, look at it, and they see if there's any you know, toxic reaction. Because the old tubes, could be made of toxic plastics. So the new tubes are safe, and they indicate that they're safe. They'll say Z79 or IT, or they'll have a symbol. But then, you know, in the US, all of the tubes are going to be safe, because we follow that kind of stuff. But I mean, worldwide, that, in China, they might be making cheap ET tubes. Who knows, right? But these might be made in China, too, but they're made. Notice that the adapter on the baby tube is the same universal adapter. So they're. This part is always the same. This part fits the particular tube. So we can use this later for something else. Okay, so baby tubes have no cuff. The rest of them do. Um, now, there's one other thing about this. You know the, the markings on the tube? Well, um, the suction catheter for the baby has markings too. So when we suction a baby, we don't suction the lungs. We suction the tube. Because if you run that catheter out the end of this and it bangs that baby's carina, it poke holes in that carina. People give people pneumo. They give babies pneumos with suction catheters because it actually pokes through their lung, right? So that nowadays we don't do that. What we do is we suction out the tube. So, uh, for example, um, let's say I have this this person in there, and let's say the tube is at 18. The suction catheter have markings. I'll I'll suction them to the 18 mark on the catheter, so I'm just clearing the tube and I'm not hitting their delicate lung tissue. So there's a little bits of differences, but otherwise, um, you know, the taping is different for a baby. Usually what we use is like a mustache, like an X-shaped piece of tape. We don't need to go around baby's head. They don't thrash around, they don't move, you know. So there's, there's little differences, but the difference in the tube, baby tubes normally, this is a very unusual baby tube because it has a cuff. That would be for an infant they couldn't ventilate otherwise. So you know when you use the ventilator with a baby, you let, that, you let there be a leak because you can't seal the airway. You don't even try to seal the airway. Any cuff will cause damage to baby's airway, and we don't want that.
Now there are some oddball endotracheal tubes here. Um, so these we're going to try and recognize. This is for nasal, bland nasal intubations. It's called the endotral tube. It has a little ring on it, and when you pull the little ring, the tip moves. Now remember that that larynx is in the front, it's anterior. So you run this down your nose, and when you get it in the right place, you pull on this ring, and it aims it into there. Because if it goes backwards, it goes in the esophagus. So that was something to help with nasal intubations. It's called the endotrol tube. I don't know if that's, that's kind of cute. Yeah, it's just a fishing line. Um, here is a wire reinforced tube. Now this, I bit on it a bunch of times. So that's cool, but that's not really why they have the wire reinforcement. This is made of a very, very, very soft material that is more comfortable for the patient, less likely to damage the airway. But it's so soft that it'll collapse. When it gets warm in the body, it gets so soft it actually kinks. So the wire is to keep the thing open. Yeah. So these are, do we ever use these? Well, yeah, but they're specialty tubes. This is my favorite. This is called a Carlin's tube. Um, this special tube has two things on the end, so tell me what it's for. Hmm? No, not that intubation, and extubation. Why would I have, what, what goes, what attaches here? The bag or the ventilator? Okay, that's my clue for you. So why would I have an ET tube with two things on the end? Nope. What goes on here? The bag or the ventilator. So why would I have two of them? How many lungs do you have, Bryce? <laughs> That's another clue. <laughs> two ventilators, independent lung ventilation. What if they have a horrible disease in one lung? The other one's perfectly normal. Every time you do peep, this lung will go whoop. This lung will do nothing. So this has two cuffs. So you shove this freaking thing in, and then you blow up the cuffs. Oh, that one's leaking. This is the bronchial cuff. Okay, sorry, it has a poop in it. Um, they just did this at Queens. This isn't done very often. Patient died. So you, you shove this all the way down in, so that this, this thing shoves into the bronchus. This one is a, above, the, above the carina. So then when you bag through the, the blue one, it'll go into that lung only. When you bag through the white one, it'll come out this hole right here, and it has to go in the other lung because this one is blocked. So you can ventilate both lungs completely differently. If that, now they use it in surgery too. If they have operate on one lung, they'll breathe the patient through the other lung, suction through this one. Anyway, um, it's called an endobronchial tube or a Carlin's tube for independently ventilating the lungs separately. Two different, like one lung gets a rate of 18 and a pressure of 12 and a peep of six, and the other lung gets you know, something completely different. So that's cool. This is the bad, bad, bad boy. This is called, this is the newest one in the world. This is called the high-low evac tube. Now this one is to prevent VAP. So it's exactly like all the others. It's a little bit thicker. And then right here is a hole, right above the cuff because the cuff is inflated and all the stuff that runs down your throat forms a pool above the cuff and then it leaks down into your lungs. Hook this baby up to suction and it'll suck all that crap out. Hmm. So nothing runs down to the hole. Hook this up to suction. So now you have a suction for the tonsil suction, a suction for the ventilator, to suction their lungs, a suction for this thing, then the nurses have their suctions. There'll be a lot of suction going on. So this thing sucks all the drool and crap that runs down there that takes the bacteria from the mouth and nose, or stuff comes up from their stomach, then it can't get in there because this just sucks it right out. The high-low evac tube. That's good. That's special. That's for VAP. Okay? Now, thus endeth the endotracheal tubethus. That's the end of the endotracheal.